In this tutorial, we'll look at some basic examples involving group theory. Group theory is a field of mathematics associated with abstract algebra. More specifically, it is the study of a set of elements present in a group. A group is a set, G, of elements together with an operation, so you can replace this asterisk with a plus or a multiplication symbol, on pairs of elements, let's call them X and Y within G, such that four defining properties are fulfilled. The first one being closure. So if you have two elements x and y, x plus y, its sum will also be in g, and x times y, its product will be in g. They are associative, meaning that if you were to add x plus y plus z, it's the same thing as the following expression. Again, just change the asterisks with plus or multiplication. The third principle of a group is that it must have an identity element. So each element within G, if you were to multiply it to that element in either way, you will get back that element. And the same applies with adding. And finally, the last principle is that an inverse exists for each element. We represent that as for all X that are in G, there exists a Y that's also in G, such that the following occurs. Those are the four basic principles. Let's apply them to these examples. In example number one, we have to show that the set Z, which is the set that includes every integer, with the operation plus is a group. So we have to go through each of these and make sure that they're satisfied. Let's start with closure. I'll write down Q1 and we'll call that C. So if you were to pick two elements within Z, let's say one and two, those are two integers. If you were to add one and two, you would end up getting three. Three is also found in Z. It's an element of Z because it's an integer. So this is satisfied. The next one is associativity. Let's pick three elements, one, two, and three. If I were to write down one plus two, within parentheses, plus three, which amounts to six, it is the same thing as saying one plus two plus three, within parentheses, which also amounts to six. Let's look at whether an identity exists. Remember, we are concerned with addition here, so let's pick any element within Z. We'll pick one and I'll call this i. One plus zero is the same thing as zero plus one, and that gives me back x, which I assigned as one. So the identity is zero. And finally, the inverse, since integers includes both positive and negative numbers, and if we're choosing x to be one, which is an element of z, one plus negative one gives us back our inverse being zero. So for every positive integer, there exists a negative integer that will give us back our identity being zero. So we've just shown that the following is a group because all four are satisfied. Now, of course, this is not a formal proof, not even close to that. It is good enough for the sake of this video, given that we are introducing groups for the first time. Okay, now let's look at question two. Show that Z with the operation multiplication is not a group. So one of these will fail. We'll start with C. If I were to pick two elements within Z, let's say one and two, one times two gives us a product of two and that's also in Z. So that passes. Now associativity. Let's pick three elements, one, two, and three. One times two times three is the same thing as saying one times two times three. They both give us a product of six, and six is found in Z. So that passes. The next test is to see if an identity exists. Let's pick the element two. We want to multiply two by something the identity such that we get two back. That number has to be one. So an identity does exist. It is one. 
So that is a pass. And finally, by deductive reasoning, this is the one that should fail. And let's see why. Does an inverse exist? So again, we'll pick 2. We want to multiply it by something such that we get back 1. Now the only thing that will lead us back to 1 is if we were to multiply this by 1 over 2. Unfortunately, 1 over 2 is not an element of the integers. And this is why it is not a group. Let's move on to question 3. Now this should be written show. Show that q, which is the set of all rational numbers, and this superscript asterisk suggests that within this set only include non-zero elements. So exclude zero from that set. With the operation, multiplication is a group. So we kind of already know that it's a group. Now we just have to prove each of these four principles. Now because we're dealing with rational numbers, rational numbers are those that can be represented as a fraction. So think of the number 3, for instance. 3 is a rational number because it can be represented as 3 over 1. And notice that 3 and 1 are integers. So I will call my first element x as p over q, where p and q are elements of integers. And y will be r over s, where they are also elements of the set z. And since we're dealing with non-zero elements, all of these cannot equal to zero. So let's begin with closure. I'll multiply x times y, and that should be an element of q star. Let's find out if it is. p over q times r over s gives us pr over qs. And since they're all non-zero elements, this is also in q star. Let's try associativity now. This time we'll assign z to be a over b, and I'll put that also in this category because we need three elements for associativity. x times y times z should be the same as x times y in parentheses times z, and it turns out to be true. p r a over q s b in that order is the same thing as p r a over q s b. So associativity passes, closure passes. And now we will look at whether an identity exists. So we'll call this i. And if we multiply x, which is p over q, by its inverse, we should get the same as the inverse times p over q, and we get back p over q. Can you think of what e could possibly be? I'm thinking of 1. e must equal to 1. 1 also is an element of q star because it can be represented as 1 over 1. And lastly, we have to show that an inverse exists. So we'll use x and y. So x times y is equal to y times x, and that should give us e. So we have p over q, and y, again, was r over s, r over s times p over q. Now, if p over q, let's say, were 3 over 2, and r over s was 2 over 3, multiplying these together, they would all cancel out, giving you back 1, which is the identity. We've done three examples. If you would like me to do examples question 4, 5, and 6, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. I've already made the video. I have not uploaded it yet. But if you do leave me a comment, I will upload that video. And in another video, I'll show you how to work with sets and modular arithmetic and this concept of groups. So I'll explain exactly what this means and how you can show that that forms a group.